So guys, when it comes to reducing the amount of loss we take, reducing that risk, you know, people are always throwing around round terms like risk management and stuff like that and trading. You know, what does it actually mean? What are some of the things that are practically um, applicable that we can actually do to um, uh, to, to make that a reality. Uh, what does it look like? What are the pros and cons of the different methods? And so in this video, we're going to be talking about two ways of trailing your stop loss, um, depending on the type of person that you are. Now, of course, nothing in this video or anywhere on the channel is financial advice. This is all just my experience, things that have worked for me, things that have worked for the people around me. Okay, so you must always do your own due diligence as possible. The correct way to digest not just this information, but any information in the trading space or in any other space is to practice and put these things into action. But in the in this case, in terms of trading, don't risk any money. You don't risk money when you're learning. You just want to get the skill set down. And so practice on a demo, practice on, you know, with back testing and stuff like that, and then come to your own conclusions uh, about whether these things are for you or not. So now that we've got that out of the way, um, let's talk about risk management, right? So essentially, when you are in a position, no matter what that position is, your risk is always going to be the distance from your entry to your stop, obviously, right? And so reducing that risk is either going to come in the form of taking partials on this side or reducing the size of the stop loss on this side all the way up to and including, you know, the break even point. Okay. And so which one is better? Which one is the magic way? Well, there isn't really a magic way. I found that a combination of both of these have been the most effective for me. However, partials, um, as much as I love them, they are, they were the hardest thing for me to adopt, just because I always felt a bit deflated seeing my position going down. Um, and, my, and, you know, it almost felt like if I, if I had a one to three, and I took a, you know, 50% partial out at a one to one level, then when it did get a one to three, I was only at like, you know, one to two, and it just kind of felt like, oh, what's the point of me even using risk reward. But whilst that was a little bit of a difficult transition to make, I am happy that I did make it. I'm not saying I always do it, but um, it is something that is worthwhile purely because the idea that fixed risk reward um, and that we can predict everything and that there's kind of empty space between everything is, is a myth. And what I mean by that is, you know, let's just say that we have this right here, come down to that entry point right there. You know, just because in this scenario, we've gotten in around here, for example, just because we see empty space here, even if we see other candles here, just because we plop it on and we're like, oh, you know, I think it's going to go three times what I've risked. That doesn't mean that all of this space doesn't have stuff going on in it. We just do not know. We can make educated guesses as people who focus on technical analysis or fundamental analysis or a combination of both in an ideal world. Um, we just don't know for sure. We can make guesses and therefore we should be managing our risk according to the fact that we are really, really not sure. However, most people just assume that all space is created equal all prices are created relatively equal at least when it comes to targets and so they just let these things run and again i'm not saying that's necessarily bad i'm just saying in the grand scheme of things and of how things really work that is just not how um that's just not the best use of uh, of this understanding instead we should acknowledge the fact that anything could change at any significant level we need a way to identify where, uh, where the high probability areas where things could turn around we need to be managing our risk accordingly because if we go cart to this level over here just imagine there was a level over here even though it may look insignificant to you you may be like oh that doesn't seem no nah, it doesn't look like a big deal there's still always a chance that price could come here and then just suddenly you know drop off the face of the earth and so if you're just relying on your risk reward entirely then what can happen is you know you're just going to take a loss where you didn't need to take a loss instead of managing your risk accordingly whether that means okay when i get to that first high probability target i take a partial i move to break even whatever it is or we begin trailing our stop loss aggressively with price and there are varying levels of aggressiveness when it comes to um, trailing our stop which is what i want to focus on in this video okay so the first way um by the way if you do not know what trading your stop is it's literally just the process of moving your stop from here to here just you know following it behind price using a specific method whatever that method is for you okay there's loads of ways to do it you know with indicators so all that sort of stuff but for me i just like to use price my personal preference um so sue me um so the first one would be let's just say we got in down here Okay, again, I'm not, this isn't a strategy video. I'm not talking about entries and stuff like that. This is literally just to prove a point here and just explain this one concept. But let's just say we got in here. I'm just going to move this over to the side here. 
Um, then what this could mean is it could mean maybe the first rule, and this is the first method I want to talk to you about, is simply trading below the bullish candle uh, lows, or if it was obviously a sell example, be below uh, above the bearish candle highs. And this would be the more aggressive form of uh, stop trailing. Now, there are pros and cons to each one of these methods. The con of this is it's you're not always going to get these explosive moves. And so you are going to have a lot of times where you get stopped out fairly near your entry, um, or it's just it's just going to stop you out much sooner than it would have done otherwise. Um, but it's a very, very simple approach here. You know, you simply wait for a candle to close, you put the stop below that level. Very, very simple, um, but also can be quite affected depending on the market conditions. Specifically, if you're trading things like indices and stuff like that, that has that tends to have these more explosive moves compared to something like FX, where generally speaking, on one one time frame or another, it's ranging the overwhelming majority of the time. Okay, now the second approach is because we understand that price is going to move in some kind of similarity to this, then what we've just done with this kind of trailing it below the candles method, we've kind of done something like this, where we're kind of trailing it that entire way up. But as soon as we hit any kind of significant pullback, that is just going to tap us out. And so there's one thing that we can do before I move on to the second method. And that is we do it, uh, we trail our stop to not the previous candle low that's just closed, but the previous, previous, so two candles ago. So for example, if this candle right here has just closed uh, in this one, so let me just draw a little arrow just so this is totally clear. So this one, so when this candle opens, in other words, when this candle closes before it, we don't put our stop below the previous candle, we put it below here. And so then when we go to the next candle, then we put it here. And sometimes what this can do is it can help filter out those really, really quick pullbacks before going back. And a classic example of that would be right over here. So, okay, imagine we got in for a buy somewhere around here. Again, not talking about entries here, this is just an example. And we began trading our stop. So when this candle, this bullish candle closed, we had it, had it two below. So not this one, but this one here. Then as we move up to the next one, you then put it below two below here, which is right here. Then we would have not been tapped out here. Whereas if we just used the most recent one, we would have been tapped out there. Okay, now I'm not saying there's anything necessarily wrong with doing the most recent one. Everything has pros and cons. There are cons of putting it two candles below as well. Sometimes it will just, it will go up further and then come all the way down and stop you out at like break even or something like that, which isn't the best feeling, but hey, it's better than a loss most of the time, okay? So that was the first method, which is what I would class as the more aggressive approach. It's more aggressive because it's following price at a more, you know, being more aggressive level way. I don't know how else to describe that, right? The next method would be identifying and having a systematic way to identify swing points, okay? So how do you know when a low has formed? What are the rules for what makes this a low, okay? So at PsychFX, we have a very... Uh, unique and systematic way of reading structure. Um, now, I'm not going to get into it here, but for example, this would be a valid low, whereas this right here would not be. Okay, I'll show you. An, so this would be, uh, this would not be right here. This would not be a valid low. This would not be uh technically let me just have a look yeah technically that could be that potentially could be right here okay but if you don't have that then you're not going to be able to systematically do what i'm talking about right here okay if you choose to um so when you have a systematic way to identify it, as soon as you get that completion of whatever those rules are for how you identify it then simply it would be placing the stop but you know if the exact amount of pips i don't know but like a few pips basically below that point. And then you continue to do this for as long as price goes. Now, what are the pros and cons of this? Well, the pros are generally speaking, you're going to catch more of the move most of the time, but the cons are you also sometimes are going to have uh, moves that go decently in, in a direction, but then come all the way back down. And because you still haven't had a chance to, you know, trail the stop, you'll probably only be a break even or something like that. And so that can be not suited to everybody, but it is a very, very nice approach. Now it's impossible to show you an example of this in this particular area of price purely because we haven't had any significant pullbacks just yet okay so let me see if i can find a quick example for you in fact i'm going to go down to the five minute just because we're likely to see more information okay okay so <clears throat> we have break of structure here uh, we 
you also have a breaker structure. Actually, no, according to my rules, that's not a valid high over here. So we break above right here. And then all I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark out all of the lows that are, uh, sorry, I'm going to mark out the lows according to our rules. Okay, so that is valid. This is valid. It's valid. Yeah, so these would be all of the valid lows. Now, of course, looking at this, assuming that we got in kind of somewhere within this sort of region, that would mean that, let me just look at an example. And again, not talking about strategy here, this is literally just to illustrate a point. Let's say our stop started somewhere around here, if we we're on a lower time frame and refining this sort of area down here, okay? Or maybe even anywhere within this sort of area, just imagine that's how we refined it then it would be the difference between moving our stop from originally down here. So I'm just gonna mark this out um, in a line and then I'm gonna gradually move that line up. And now I'm just gonna copy and paste it, but then be moving it up here and then we'd be moving it up here, okay? So this may seem insignificant because we've only moved it a little bit and the entry was here. Again, very unrealistic, I'd never enter there, um, but it just gives you an idea how you can begin to form something. And although price did come and swing us out in this particular example, there are plenty of examples when it does run. And this is the key, right? Because at the end of the day, when it comes to trailing your stop, yes, there are going to be a lot of times where things, uh, you know, maybe you trail it and you, you barely get a break even or something like that. But when you're trailing your stop, you are waiting. Your job is to be patient and just follow the rules and manage the risk so that when the time comes, when those big trends do come, you are in the most prime position to take advantage of it. Because if you trail your stop, generally you will be in a very, very lovely position to just continually ride the move out. Okay, so right here, for example, if we were selling over here for whatever reason, stop started there, stop, uh, valid high right here. And again, this is where it becomes really, really important to have a way to identify valid highs and valid lows, because if you can't do that, then you're going to run into all sorts of issues here. For example, if you're seeing th these as highs or lows, then I'm not saying that's bad or good, but I'm just saying in this particular scenario, you wouldn't have been able to take full advantage. See, by trailing it, having a systematic way of developing structure and understanding structure, it does put you in a very powerful position. Trail it down here. Um, so these areas that I'm marking, by the way, they are literally just valid highs according to my rules, as simple as that. Uh, then we have one right here. And so we would have been stopped out at this level right here. OK, but you can see compared to if you had just been if you uh, you just use a, a basic fixed risk reward, you wouldn't have been able to take advantage of that fully, um, at least not without just holding it to you know infinity and beyond of course on the flip side of this we can in, you know implement partials and stuff like that again um one of the key areas for partials at least one of the most simple ways of doing it is at swing points which brings it back to the original thing you need a way to systematically mark out structure now whatever that method is whether your method is different to mine it really really doesn't matter um the bottom line is that you are uh, you do have some sort of way to read structure systematically because at the end of the day if you can't have consistent an output with what you're doing in other words you can't oh sorry consistent input so in other words what you do day to day the way that you follow your rules if you can't be consistent with that then how can you expect consistent output in the form of your results okay now i do advise you to go uh, on your charts and back test these things without risk maybe develop your own method of identifying swing highs and swing lows in a in a very concise and clear fashion. If you want to kind of save some time, you're welcome to join the Academy. There's no pressure to do that whatsoever. I've got lots of videos on the channel that you can enjoy. Um, so make your own decision, take your time. And uh, I really, really hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you have, if you'd like me to make a follow-up video talking about it in a little bit more depth, maybe you thought there's something I've missed, let me know in the comment section below and, uh, and we can get, uh, well, and I'll make a video for you, but take care. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. I hope you have an amazing week ahead and, uh, and I'll see you very soon.